Hey, everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. You're in my corner, and I have a very special guest in the corner. Would you like to unveil your identity to the fans out there? Well, I'm bigger than a bread box. Um, <laughs> would my name mean anything? My name is Mike Lindsay, and I do a lot of voiceover stuff and a lot of games. Well, I can say that your name does mean something, because when I said it in our live chat earlier, just to give everybody a reminder, everyone was like, Digimon! Digimon! <laughs> yeah, Digimon, those are the good old days. Yeah, that was back before the war. <laughs> that was like my first, I think that was my first series. I did uh, Gundam before that. Um, I did Amuro in Gundam. And then um, Saban was casting for Digimon. And... Uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Well, to rewind a little bit, take a little bit of a time machine back into the past. What originally got you into acting? Um, well, I I, uh, I was in I, I was I've been acting since I was about fourteen. I guess I was uh, I was a child actor, and I used to do all the local uh, dinner theater and theater scene around here, Washington D.C., where I am right now, and. Um, and then I got a um, uh, full acting scholarship to a school in uh, Garden City, Long Island, at Delphi University, and spent a lot of time in New York um, writing shows with a guy named John Larson, who wrote Rent. And um, so he and I did like three shows, and he actually offered me the lead in Rent, but I turned it down because I'm an idiot. Um, and uh, then I ended up in Los Angeles, and I did a lot of looping, which is like doing... Uh, you know, background stuff on Melrose Place and a show called Kindred the Embraced and a lot of Aaron Spelling shows. And it was kind of a small crowd. And there was a guy named Doug Stone who looped um, a show called um, Hercules and Xena. And uh, he brought me in a couple times. We hit it off. And he, he called me and said, you know, could you do a 15-year-old boy? And I said, you know, could you elaborate? And... Uh, <laughs> I went in and auditioned for a guy named Utaka, who um, is, is a, a legend in his own time, and got the role of Amuro. And I did three Gundam movies as Amuro, and then I just sort of, it sort of progressed from there, you know, from Digimon to um, Transformers and Dragon, uh, God, some of the dinosaurs, and Tokyo Pig, and, you know, they ended up in Bleach and Naruto, and a lot of games along the way. And now, when you first got involved with anime, did you know what it was, or were you one of those people who were like, Pokemon? No, because even as a kid, I was, you know, I, I God, what were the things we used to watch? Marine Boy, Speed Racer, um, and Gigantor was one of my favorites, um, even though they had to change it a lot for American audiences. Um, but, uh, so I knew what it was, I knew what it was, and, um, you know, I, 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 I don't go into the Joseph Campbell aspects of it, as, you know, some of my, my friends do, uh, Crispin. Um, but um, <laughs> it comes to mind, because he knows everything about it, Crispin does. Um, but, uh, yeah, I knew what it was, and I didn't know what Digimon was. And I thought at the time, I'm like, oh, is it some sort of Pokemon ripoff or something? And was really surprised and actually delighted, because I, I thought the scripts were very funny and really good. And uh, it was really a great, you know, and plus, you know, I got to be a monster. I got to digivolve into Greymon and, you know, be allergic to everything as, uh, as, as Joe. And it was just a great sort of inundation. Because, you know, once, once, you, once I did Gundam, I, I kind of knew. I like, I go, I'm like, okay, I get this. And, you know, to find out that this is what they're watching in prime time in Japan is, you know, it's pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, so it was actually, a, it was a very good time, actually. A lot of great people on Digimon. And once, it's a small community, so once you started working, once I started working with these people, it, it just sort of branched out. You know, Jamie uh, Simone was working at, the, at, at uh, Saban, and when he went out and did Studiopolis, he was very nice to me. He remembered me. So I got to do, you know, Kaje no Yujinbo and, um, you know, Naruto and, uh, you know, just a bunch of other titles with him, as well as you know all the Naruto games and you know Digimon games and you know, so it's just it just sort of it's just sort of steamrolled. And now you were kind of around uh, during the anime boom, and so did you ever feel sort of overwhelmed to see how big it became? 
<clears throat> being recognized on the street um, of Los Angeles as a voiceover actor. Now, granted, at the time I had, you know, I had hair down to my waist. Um, so maybe I wasn't that difficult to spot, but to be, you know, to be noticed as someone who's like, oh, you know, you're the voice of Wentworth and Tokyo Pig, or, you know, I love you in Digimon, it was, was, was weird. It was, you know, because, you know, I've been an actor, I've done commercials, and, you know, I did voiceover for years, and, you know, as a Shakespearean actor, I was working at a bunch of theaters and, you know, across the country, you know, including the public theater in New York, and, the uh, the Will's Gear Theatricum in you know Topanga, big great big Shakespeare you know uh, outdoor theater, and you think you know somebody would have seen you in that, but no, <laughs> people recognized me, and I was standing behind a microphone, so um, it was you know it was very cool, but it, it was a little overwhelming because I didn't realize I didn't realize the scope I think of anime I didn't realize how incredibly popular it was. Um, I think when you're in it, it's harder to see what's going on, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 to me, it wasn't just a job, because I mean, I, you know, I, I never phoned anything in, I mean, I, you know, I, I took it very seriously, but it's just what I did, and I, I didn't think you should be famous for it, and here I was, and it was, a, you know, very stringent, um, and a, a very small, but a very devout cult following, and, um, you know, I went to only a couple of, uh, conventions, I'd probably go to more if someone asked me, but, um, you know, it was amazing to see people dressed, you know, I did a Naruto thing, and I did another, um, and, you know, people would come dressed as, as Kankuro, and, you know, and, you know, have me sign, you know, <laughs> sign their puppets, <laughs> and it was, just, it was, it's a little overwhelming, and, um, I, my first experience was after I had done, um, uh, a show called, uh, Marmalade Boy was the first time that I think I went to uh, the Anaheim Convention Center over the 4th of July weekend. And, you know, I figured there'd be two people there. Or something. And I sat between Wendy Lee and Michelle Ruff, and I signed autographs for, I think, like two and a half hours, three hours. And it was just, I was just, I, it, it, it's startling. You know, you're like, really? You want my autograph? Really? I'm, I'm like a dad. You really? Really? So, <laughs> It was nice, but it's you know it's weird. You know, it was it was sort of a strange thing. I, it's not that you know actors are averse to like being recognized, but I didn't realize the depth of the uh, the love of the anime community. Well, it's kind of amazing. I mean, anime I I don't want to say is as mainstream as it was because you don't see it so often on prime time slots here in you know normal networks like Cartoon Network um, sometimes you'll see it or Nickelodeon sometimes but you really don't see it on like Fox or anything like that as often as you used to but you see conventions uh, attendance keeps rising uh, Anime Expo I think has 50,000 people every year which is insane all on its own right 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 yeah I mean because you know Digimon was a uh, uh, um uh, it was on Fox, and you know, I mean, and, and you know, it was also nice because we just do promos uh, for it too, and you know, I mean, and it was it's fairly current. You're right; it's, it's been sort of more marginalized, but I think that has to do um, with um, you know the internet and things. But I mean, for a while there, the, you know, Naruto, Bleach, and Code Geass were all you know on TV, you know, on you know regular TV, and. You know, you could tune in, and, you know, there I was in three primetime shows and go, well, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's a cool thing. But I think, you know, with the, I think um, Internet and, uh, you know, the social media, I think, I think people are a lot more, I think they can go for a lot more obscure stuff that you're not seeing yet in the United States. And, you know, if I had a, you know, if I had a dime for every, you know, time someone would, you know, send me an email or something and go, you know, dude, if you check out, you know, what they're saying about you, I'm like, no, I don't do websites or something, and it send me a link. And it's, you know, all these people discussing how I'm, you know, they hate American dubs and the Japanese is so much better. And I just go like, uh, you know, it's like, and I'm sure it is, you know, like, I guess, you know, I, I don't understand Japanese. I I speak a very small amount of Japanese, but um, you know, like, oh, the, you know, the dubbing, this is, it's, it's a completely, there are two completely different languages. The, the syllabification alone is, you know, is, is incredibly different. And it's sort of like seeing, you know, opera in German or Italian. 
and you hear these, you know, great things. You hear, you know, you, a Mozart, and you say, you know, like, oh my God, you know, the magic flute. You go, oh, that is such a beautiful line, and it, you know, and then it translates into English into, let go of my hand. It's like, oh wow, well that's kind of left out. <laughs> so I think the mystery of the, the Japanese, um, uh, you know, the Japanese originals. I, you know, if you don't speak a lot of Japanese, I think, you know, it just sounds cooler. Like, wow. <laughs> and then when you know what they're saying, you're like, wow, that's just weird. I mean, I have to say, I think the complaint that, you know, voice actors in the U.S. aren't as good or that stuff isn't coming out fast enough or anything like that is sort of becoming more and more nil and void because you've seen the technology get better. You've seen, uh, you know, the actors uh take more time uh, to give into their roles. And you've also seen people literally the same day it's aired in Japan putting it up subtitled legally on places like Crunchyroll and Funimation. So right. it, it, it's, it's sort of silly to me because they're, they're closing the gap on all the things the fans are complaining about. So when I hear that those complaints kind of still exist, it, it makes me think you haven't really watched anything dubbed since, you know, I don't know, the 1990s, have you? <laughs> Well, it's also, I mean, you, it, 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 you just have to get a really thick skin about criticism. I remember uh, I, when I was doing um, Bleach, <clears throat> the first time that you see Urahara, he is awakened out of a deep sleep. And, you know, someone's like, he sounded stoned. I'm like, no, I sounded like someone who's answering the door, like, yeah. <laughs> no, and you know, like, and after that, I think that was the last thing that I read about something like that. I'm just like, you know what? I don't, I don't need that. <laughs> I have enough people wanting to take shots at me. I, you know, and you know, if you saw the kind of care, I mean, you know, how many takes you do, and um, it, you know, it's a weird, weird way to do it. In Japan, they're all in the same room. You know, for a good chunk of the time, I don't know how they're doing it now, but as of you know, five years ago, that you know, they were all in the room and they would go up to a microphone, you know, when their line was, so you could bounce off people. In you know, the states, in Los Angeles at least, you're you know, it's just you and a booth, and there's the director on the other side of the glass and the engineer. You know, usually it's Michael Clark, you know, who's the engineer, and uh, you know, Jamie directing or you know, Mary Elizabeth directing or um, you know. A, great people, Michael Sorich, all these different people that, you know, on the other side of the glass. <clears throat> and you go in, and, and there's a script. And I had no idea what Bleach was about the first time that I went in. You can't get a copy of the script beforehand because there's all kinds of, you know, confidentiality agreements. And so they'll give you, like, a synopsis before you start saying your lines. And then the next thing you do, you know, you put on headphones and you hear three beeps, you know, the, and you speak on the fourth imaginary beep. And you're this character. And, yeah, as it goes on, you can, you know, you get a feel for it and you can go deeper into it. But it's like, I don't know anybody that does it that takes it for granted the mistakes. I mean, there are some people that, you know, whose work I don't admire, and there are a lot of people whose work I admire. But the people that I know in Los Angeles, nobody, nobody ever, ever you know, is like, oh, it's, a, it's another job. I can't believe it. You know, there are obviously shows you like more, you have a better feeling for but, you know, people, you know, I'm a damn good actor. I'm, you know, I, I'm classically trained. I do Shakespeare. And I take it as seriously as anything. I, anything that's going to have my name on it is going to be something that I, you know, something that I take pride in. And, uh, and you know, when I read things about, you know, oh, I don't like this voice, I don't like this voice, well, you're talking about people who I know and respect. And so it just kind of, you know, it, it, I guess it makes me work a little bit harder, but, you know, it, 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 to, I think to some it's just a name on, you know, a DVD or a cartoon, you know, the, the, the scroll at the end. But to me, these are all people that I know and care about and think, you know, think very highly of their talent. So I get a little, I get a little you know, a little militant about that. Like, really? <laughs> Well, I can sympathize because, you know, when anybody critiques any of the uh, DJs here, they're like, you know, my second family, so I don't, I don't like to hear anything bad. But at, at the same time, I don't think a lot of fans uh, realize that it's not just 
the the voice actors, but you know it could be a casting director or it could be an engineer. If like there's an there's an actual mistake, it's funny because a lot of the things that you guys might be told to do in the booth, maybe you were told to do it. You weren't you were it wasn't your choice to do it that way. And sometimes you get flack for that. Well, kind of. I guess it was. There, 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 it, it's happened in various uh, cartoons. I won't nail uh, anime. I won't na- you know name one particular app, but you know they'll have those takes where the character's face completely changes. You know, it does a such surprise take. I think it happened in Marmalade Boy a lot, where you know he would all of a sudden, where you would suddenly like his face would just change, and and I would make some goofy noise because it like you know like whoa. And I get all this grief. I'm like, look at the guy's face. What am I supposed to do? Say, you know, Stella, I love you. I mean, come on. It's like, come on. You know, you have to have a little bit of common sense. And um, no, and I mean, we're directed 18 different ways. And then, you know, you you do a line. Um, I'm one of those guys who I I, I don't like previews because I'm actually pretty good on picking it up on the first time. And then, you know, then you're directed. And, and you're an actor in a booth and you go okay yeah you know there are times when you get to know like i think i think probably the the most comfortable i felt was with uh did a, a character called george kadama in kaze no yojimbo and by the second episode i like really felt i knew the guy and so you know if, if i was directed a certain way jamie simone directed it then he's, he's brilliant and michael clark was the engineer and uh he's like the best in the business and, uh, uh, but, you know, there's Ernie and a bunch of other guys who are just fantastic, too. I mean, really, really good engineers. And they would go, okay, what do you want to do? And I would do it, and it would be right. And it, I, I think that came out kind of like the most I liked. When we were doing Digimon, it, because it was a prime time thing and, you know, it was getting so much exposure and stuff, there were so many people... You know, not only would there be a director, but there'd be a producer sitting there. And, you know, not only there was a producer, but there'd be people from, you know, from Fox Kids sitting there. You know, there'd be clients sitting there. Pressure! Everybody, everybody would put their two cents in. So it was, it was like, you know, I'd make some joke, and, you know, there'd just be like this stony wall of science and silence. And like, oh, that, was a, that, was a bad, that was a bad mistake. Oh gosh, that would scare me. When I don't get any response or any any smiles or laughter from anybody, and the, everybody's just all staring, I'm like, oh. Well, uh. I, I, I have to keep it light. I mean, I'm I'm doing different voices all the time, and you know, because I'm trying to entertain the director and the you know the engineer too. You know, I mean, cause they, you know, they must have you know on an episode you figure, like I said, you're in there by yourself. Say I have 80 loops. Well, there are probably 20 other actors that have 80 loops, and then there are 10 other actors who have fewer loops, and then there are guys that go in and do Walla, which is, you know, all the group voices. So, you know, I just try and keep things funny, you know, and I, that's just, just the way I am. I, uh, you know, I, I cherish those people that, you know, are on the other side of the glass. They are going to make me look or sound as good as possible, and the only gift that I can give them is kind of, you know, is making jokes. And... Um, you know, so I mean, you know, I, I would do voices. I would, my Native American voice became, you know, famous among, <laughs> but not a, you know, not outside the anime world, and only by directors and engineers. And it was just, you know, something you did to pass the time in between takes. You don't blow a take. You know, you don't, you know, I don't screw up with the product, but in between, there's a lot of downtime. And I think you can either be decent or you can be a jerk. And to my way of thinking, or, you know, from what I know about the anime community, jerks don't work a lot. Um, because, and, and, cause, you know, directors, producers, engineers aren't going to work with someone who's a jerk. You know, it, they're it's probably one of the nicest groups of people you could ever be among. You know, I mean, you know, the Richard Epgars, the, you know, the Michael Storages, the Doug Stones, you know, the Mary Elizabeth, the, the Michelle Ruffs, um, you know, people at at, uh, at animes and um, obviously the people at Studiopolis, they're, these are just, like, really good people. And you become very close to them. You know, you, you know I, I'm in D.C., I had a thing, and I've been away for a while. But, you know, I mean, I still, I, you know, read a match cut from Studiopolis, talk to me all the time. 
and you know, I, I'm always texting and emailing Michael Stewart and Doug Stone. These are good people. So it's it, it's a very tight community, and um, we take the work seriously, but we don't take ourselves very seriously. Well, you gotta have fun doing it. If you're not having fun, then what's the point? Yeah, well, it, it, it's, it's a, you know, it's it, it, it's two dimensional, and you're trying to breathe a third dimension into it, and it's kind of a weird job. And, you know, when my kids were little, you know, they would wake up and, you know, run out to watch Digimon or Transformers or something. And, you know, Dad, Dad, it's a Skids episode. And, you know, I'd be like, oh, I'm really glad that you, you think so. And I, I'm just not a big watcher of what I do. I do it and I try and do it as well as I can. But I don't, you know, I just don't. I'm not, I don't think I'm egotistical enough. I'm not saying that other people who do it are. But, you know, I just kind of, once I've done it, I let it go. But, you know, to see your kids, like, oh, jumping up and down, and like, oh, that's really great. And then you watch Aww. them go, I can't believe that they cut out that line. I had this great ad lib at the end. Oh, man. <laughs> and plus, it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe I sounded like that. Oh, my God. Oh, dear. Why didn't they edit me out? Well, I, you know, I, I've always known that I had a face for voiceover, so, you know, just like, oh. God, I sound like a chipmunk. I sound like a chipmunk on a fence or something. Oh, that's just wrong. So it, I'm very critical of what I do. So it's, um, but in the making of it, I try to have as much fun as possible and try and make it, try and be as pleasant as possible for those people who work with me. Definitely. And I think with that, we're going to take a very short break here on 91.8 The Fan. But don't go anywhere because our special guest isn't going to go anywhere unless I chase him off, which I promise I won't do this time. Keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't. This is a public service announcement. It has recently come to our attention that not wearing shirts causes Sassnat cancer, double herpes, and super diabetes. To prevent these made-up illnesses, 918 The Fan is distributing protective clothing specifically designed to protect you from hazardous materials through a patented process that we won't explain because you'll probably just be too stupid to understand there's totally not fake or made-up science. To get your protective garments, simply head over to 918thefan.com and click on the apparel button under store. Remember, only 918 The Fan's protective shirts are 100% effective in protecting you from the radiation given off by death crystals and dysentery lasers. Don't settle for cheap imitations. It could cost you your life. Hey, everybody out there. You're tuned in to 91.8 The Van. And we had an extra long break because we had awesome, awesome talks in the background that you will never hear. <laughs> you will never know the people we talked about. It could be you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so mean. Pay no attention to the man who you don't hear breathing off the line either. <laughs> And we're making fun of. I hear in my head. We're making fun of our producer as well. Always a good time. But would you like to remind the people out there who you are, just in case they forgot? Oh, I'm sorry for those of you with really short attention spans. I am still Michael Lindsay. Are you sure? You're are you sure? Didn't change into anybody else. Actually, I I want to be Crispin Freeman sometimes, but I mean, don't we all? <laughs> With the blonde hair, yes, definitely. Well, wait, I have blonde hair, too. I'm just shorter and homelier, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay, it's radio. One thing I wanted to ask you before we get too off-topic, wherever we're going with that topic is... Wherever we're going with that topic, yeah. We feel like a man crush, you know? <laughs> Romance <laughs> between two bros. Uh, uh, <laughs> but you, you you worked in the in the L.A. area, and have you noticed recently that video games have has sort of become, like, the, a bigger thing? that more and more video games are asking voice actors to do the grunts and the and the grenades and all that fun stuff? Well, I, one thing I've noticed, too, is, and sadly, I've done some games, and I, I, the last two I've done, I'm still under a confidentiality agreement, so I can't mention them, but they're, you know, they're big. Um, they're hiring a lot of celebrities. Celebrities are doing stuff. I mean, like the, um, what is it, Gears of War, Black Ops? I mean, you know, there were... I mean, there were like A-list celebrities doing, you know, not huge roles. So it's actually pretty tough for a voice actor right now. You know, if, if you're lucky, you know, you, you get, I, you know, I worked, I'm like, I'm on a little bit of a hiatus right now, but, you know, I mean, I work pretty steadily, but um, more name actors are doing roles in video games, partly because I think they want to reintroduce themselves to a new audience, a younger audience who might not, you know, know who, um, 
you know, ice cube is. No, what, ice, ice tea? <laughs> Maybe. What are the ices? <laughs> Vanilla Slurpee, I think, was was, was my rapping name. Um, but uh, You, know, you, you to... talk to me as if I listen to U.S. music when I run an Asian radio station. <laughs> Well, you know, I listen to everything, so what the heck? But you know, he, you know, he was. Uh, I mean, there were a lot of, a lot of really big names doing roles on, uh, you know, the bigger video games. And so, um, you know, when I get called in, yeah, you know, if I have, you know, if I the last one of the last games I did, I think was in March or something. I've been out in Washington D.C. since March. I had a family thing, and. Um, I, I had to do so much screaming and dying. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, you don't want to do that. And, um, you know, for two hours of that, and the next morning, it, it was kind of cool, because the next morning I'd sound like James Earl Jones. It was, you know, <laughs> hello, see you then. Um, Please so, tell me um, you recorded some lines like that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, 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 that's when I go for my promo jobs, you know, the, the day <laughs> after I did, you know, like, God, what, what is, I think one of the worst, I mean, it was a great game, but I mean, it was a really grueling thing, was um, a game I did called Shadow Over Rome. And it was funny because I was playing the role of Cassius in Julius Caesar at a theater, and I ended up playing Cassius in Shadow Over Rome. But, you know, I must have been gored 18 times by a sword. I mean, they're like, and every, for every time you're struck, you have to do a medium strike, um, uh, you know, Medium wound, a small wound, a small wound, medium wound, big wound. So you're like, ah, 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 for like half an hour. And the next day, you're just, hello, how are you? You sound like a Peter Laurie in the first night. Like, hello, it's nice to see you. <laughs> Rick, you must hide me, Rick. You know, <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, it's, but, you know, like I said, it's, you know, I did a Capital One commercial. And it was one of the last ones where they had the, uh, you know, the Visigoths running through stadiums with big swords and, you know, cutting people's heads off. And I was one of the guys running through a stadium. And for two days, we had to run um, wearing leather and fur, carrying a sword and a shield. And at one point, we did, we were in the uh, Los Angeles Coliseum, and it was about 100 degrees, and we did 37 takes of running upstairs of running up, you know, the side of the stadium. Oh, God, yeah. kill me now. Yeah, exactly. And the first take, I, I twisted my, my ankle weird. I partially ruptured my Achilles tendon. So for two days, I ran and charged, you know, like doing the Gurkha war, war cry for two days. And at the final day, they had to cut me out of my boots because my, my foot was, like, just swollen and just purple. And I, I won't say anything bad about Capital because it was great because they ran the, the, the absolute crap out of that commercial and I made a buttload of money, so I can't really say anything. But after that, I, I swore to myself that I would never again complain about doing voiceover because a bad voiceover gig is when, like, the Perrier is warm. You know, so I'm like, you know what? I'm good. So if I have to do, you know, 118, you know, death cries, I'm doing it, and I'm happy. So... It's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a nice, it's actually a nice gig, but we do, I think voiceovers are called in to do, we do a lot of the more, I don't know, I think some of the harder things, some of the less character things, like some of the, more of the smaller roles. So people that were doing larger roles are being replaced by, you know, fairly big actors. So it's, it's sort of narrowing of the pool, but luckily there's so much that you can get a lead in one thing, you know, and you might not get the lead in, um, you know, in Gears of War. You know, they, they must, they're trying to cast for something else. But you might get a great role in, you know, Lord of the Rings. So, you know, of course, I was always like, you know, goblin, a goblin to the left, a third goblin on the right in the, the Lord of the Rings. But, you know, they paid me, and so it was good. But uh, it's, a, it's actually, it's a small community, and it's a fun community. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, but I think, I don't know if this is going to be the, the trend, but right now it's not a really good time to be like a middle-class actor. In Los Angeles, I don't know what it's like anywhere else, because, like I said, I've been on hiatus for about five months. 
Well, I will say it's kind of funny because even looking over your credits for video games now and some of the ones I personally have played, I can't think of any ones where you're not either getting hurt or yelled at. Like, take for, it takes Dino Saga, for example, assuming uh, Wikipedia and IMDb are to be trusted. Um, there's a character in that, and I, I don't remember him ever dying, but I remember uh, that he got punched in the face a lot and kicked in the back of the head and teased. So yeah. it, it's kind of it's kind of sad that you basically go to work and get teased. <laughs> yeah. Well, but one of the first um, things, I guess we get is animes, um, uh, and it was called Fist of the North Star. And the lead character had this ability to, if he didn't like you, if you were a villain, he could concentrate really hard and your head would blow up. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> And you know, and, and like, how do you how do you really do a you know a satisfying my head's about to blow up kind of thing? Because I, I, I they kept bringing me back for all these little small roles, but I think my head blew up like 18 times during the course of that series. And it's just like, okay, here I go. And by the end, I think I had really mastered a good head blowing up sound. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, you might need it one day. You never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. And I, an outlaw star, I got, um, and, and Cowboy Bebop. I was always one of the guys that was just getting the absolute, absolute poo kick out of, like at any given moment. <laughs> and um, I, think I, I think I must have died more during Dynasty Warriors than I think any other, you know, like seven, you know, seven editions of Dynasty Warriors and just, you know, just getting, uh, getting killed 12 times, a, 12 times a, a game. So it's pretty fun, actually. I mean, it's really, you know, I, I'm, you know, my my kids are out in L.A., but uh, you know, we were all one big happy family. I would come home, and they're like, "What did you do today, Dad?" I'm like, "Oh, my head blew up." <laughs> I'm sure they loved that. Well, they did. Well, Dylan, my head blew up. <laughs> Here, I'm sorry, but my head blew up at work today. I, I'm sorry, I'm late. And um, so it's, you know, but it's, it, you know, it's also fun too because some of their friends, I bought. Dylan, um, an Urahara hat. My son Dylan plays golf. And I thought it would be like sort of a birthday gag gift, you know, the, the, the green and white striped hat. And um, it was funny. I took out, you know, my, my credit card. And the guy at the store is like, D, Michael Lindsay? I'm like, oh, come on, Dad, really, come on. Really, come on. And I, you know, so I, I, you know, I sign stuff for him, and I, you know, I always try and be nice, you know. I, I, I just, I just think it's weird that people, some people know who I am, but it's, like I said, they're only like, you know, it's a very small community. And brought it home to him, and he thought it was funny, and he wore it on the golf course. And one of his friends came over, and said, "Oh, do you like that show?" And my son's like, "Well, not really." So he's like, "Well, why do you have the hat?" He goes, "Well, my dad plays that role." <laughs> and you know, his friend's like, "Really?" Really? And this this is a kid who I've talked to, I've known since he was six years old, and all of a sudden he like couldn't talk to me for like I, I, you know you I didn't I I didn't, really? <laughs> you know, but the kid, you know, my, my my son and my daughter are just completely you know like ah, yeah great dad yeah. love love what you did really it's important you're really you're really impressive. That is so cute. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's just sort of the way it is, you know. That's just that's how they grew up. You know, I mean, cause I think I was doing Digimon when, because my son Dylan is 16 and my daughter Kira is 13. So, I mean, they grew up with me being, you know, in anime. And they used to come, Dylan, I would bring him when he was a small kid, and he would actually play in the studio while I was recording Digimon on a Saturday. You know, if the, you know, if the, my daughter had a birthday party or something to go to. And, you know, he'd sit at my feet and never made a sound. And my daughter was the same way, that they were just, they knew that when a microphone was on, they didn't, you know, they didn't say stuff. And, and, you know, they actually, and and they just thought that everybody, every child in Los Angeles grows up and has a voice actor. They, you know, they, they, they has a, you know, has a, um, a a voice agent. They just assumed that, like, you know, Aunt Arlene (laughs) just, you know, signed you when you were, you know, when you were, when you could read. She's like, when they can read, bring them in. They're, then they're signed. And you know, Aunt Arlene Thornton had my son and my daughter on. You know, they just thought they just thought that's the way it was. And they're like, do you know what I had to go through to get an agent yet? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's a fun town, and it's a, it's actually a fun way to make a living. 
That, that's amazing that they they could actually recognize at, at that age, uh, you know, a microphone's on to be quiet. I can't even get my cat to recognize that. I mean, <laughs> she has to come in the middle of interviews and it's like, oh hi. Well, just just to, you know, in defense of my children as opposed to a cat, my children do have opposable thumbs. You know, so this I'm just saying true. that perhaps it'll, you know, be evo- a little bit higher on the evolution. Probably not much, but, you know, a little <laughs> bit higher on the evolutionary scale. Um, you know, because they can actually, they can actually rend flesh with their teeth and stuff like, like your cat. But now they just grew up with it. I remember, you know, bringing my daughter, you know, when she was a newborn and just having her on my shoulder. And I would, you know, she'd make a, a gurgling noise and I'd go, Shh. And she would shush. In later years, she wouldn't, but <laughs> that's the way she is. Now, for the listeners out there, uh, is there any projects that have recently come out that you want to pimp out to them or anything that you're working on that you can talk about? Um, you know, the, the, the video games are all, well, I guess the answer is just called games now. I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't talk about that. And I've actually been on a hiatus for uh, about five months, so I'm kind of out of the scene for a while. I'm hoping to go back at the beginning of the year and, uh, you know, try and get jump-started again. So all those people at Animes and, and Studiopolis, and, you know, just, just remember me, okay? Because <laughs> remember? Come on. No, I mean, it, I mean this, my stuff is still on. I don't know what happened to, um, <clears throat> I guess they went for different plot lines in Bleach, and, um... The last I heard, Konkuro, um, uh, you know, almost died um, when he had to get Gara back and uh, had to be saved by the granny woman who uh, took out the poison that the scorpion guy gave me. And then Konkuro disappeared for a while, so I don't know what's up with him. And uh, because of where I am now, I've had to turn down a couple of things, which are, you know, sad, but, you know, it's, just, it's hard to fly out and do a, do a session. But, uh, no, I mean, I just, you know, right now I'm auditioning for local theaters out here and, you know, doing that, because that was always what I did first and enjoyed the most. But, you know, I love, don't get me wrong, I love the voiceover and I love the anime. But uh, I'm, I've been sort of out of it for a while. <laughs> I had some stuff happen that, you know, just kind of, we just won't talk about. It, so, um, but I'm, you know, I'm sort of, I was sort of voted off the island. Actually, I sort of voted myself off the island. <laughs> You just didn't want that million-dollar prize. Yeah, I didn't get that at all. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I didn't get the million-dollar prize, but I did. I did get like really wonderful parting gifts, like cremettes, um, which is a really obscure reference to when I was a kid, and they would have on game shows. For some reason, people, who, contestants who lost, would always get cremettes, which I guess is a form of pasta. I'm like, wow, really? I humiliated myself on Jeopardy, and I get cremettes? Thank you. Where do I sign? Yes. Um, For the listeners out there, though, is there any place on the interwebs where they can keep updated, you know, when you get back into the scene? Um, You know, I'm on Facebook. Michael Lindsay, request, you know, I'm I'm cool, you know, as long as you're not weird, uh, you know. Well, obviously, if you'd want to befriend me, it might be a little weird, but, you know, I enjoy talking about it. Don't be in his bushes outside his house, guys. (laughs) Guys. I can't give, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a, because I've, I actually had that occasionally. When I was on Digimon, I had a, a cyber stalker, which was kind of freaky. I'm like, really? Really? This is, this is how you want to spend your life, huh? <laughs> Great. <laughs> you know, thank you. You know, it, it, but, um, no, I'm, I'm totally on Facebook, and, you know, I'm totally, I'm very fan friendly. I, fans gave me a very good quality of life for a very long period of time. And I'm always happy to send, you know, autographs and stuff. And, you know, and I, that, it, that, that to me is just, you know, what you do. And, um, um, you know, it, it's kind of like the way to pay back. Because, you know, I, I think it's the weirdest thing that people know me. But, I, you know, I'm always happy to talk to someone about it and exchange messages. I've got, you know, a lot of anime fans on, uh, on Facebook. And, um, you know, and I've, I've never returned, you know, turned down a request. You know, unless there's something, you know, that involves, like, an animal or something. I mean, that would just be weird. Um, Hey, would you sign my yak? You know, (laughs) (laughs) like, I'd love to, but I can't right now. I'm I'm yak-free. I'm allergic. (laughs) (laughs) I'm totally allergic to angora and yak wool. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. 
So since uh, we're nearing the end of this interview, I was wondering if you'd like to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. All right. Does this, again, involve any livestock or yaks? <laughs> no, it doesn't, because we okay. know you're allergic. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Basically, we were wondering if you'd be willing to do a radio bump for us. Oh, sure. Awesome. The trick of it is we ask you to do the takes live on air. Okay. Okay. He, he doesn't seem intimidated. That's a good thing. Come on. <laughs> like water off a duck's back. Watch me screw this up 18 times. You're listening to 98.1. Oh, no. You're listening to 90. No. no. The fan, no. Okay, so what do I say? Everybody mixes up the numbers, too, so you wouldn't be the first. <laughs> Basically, we were wondering if you could say, hello, my name is, you insert your name here, I do this, you can say characters or just that you're an actor, whatever you want to do there, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Okay. All right, so let me just get this right. Hello, I'm insert name here, um, and then I have to say who I am and why you should be listening to me. And then yes. You're tuned in, too. Okay. Tuned. Is there one or two Bs in tuned? Sorry. <laughs> Why are you asking me? I'm a terrible speller. I just asked yeah, my I've staff to spell things for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm actually uh, got a touch of dyslexia, too. So. <laughs> so just tell me when to go, man. I'm there, Jackie. I'm there for you. Whenever you're ready, we can do it. Take one. Hello, I'm Michael Lindsay. Perhaps you remember me as Kankuro or Urahara or Joe or Greymont, because <laughs> I'm a voiceover god. And you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. Look at that. No bloopers, no nothing. I know. I wanted to do a blooper just so people would remember me more, but no, I'm good. <laughs> it's okay. I think, I think people will remember this lovely interview because it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Jackie. Anytime. And for anybody out there... That missed yes, any of this interview. Pardon? Shame on you. For anybody, oh, yeah. Yeah. who would not be listening to this interview? I mean, come on. I mean, totally. What you want to keep? Would not be listening to this interview. <laughs> but you can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to ninety-one point eight, the fan. Everything you want and nothing you don't.